Shabbat Shalom, CSAIR. I'm Chava Morel, and I'm so honored to share with you my setting of Psalm 27, which I sing all year round to help to bring me into Shabbat and into the peace and calm of the present moment. Achat sha'alti me'et Adonai Achat sha'alti otav akesh Achat sha'alti me'et Adonai Achat sha'alti Shivti, Shivti, Beveta Donai, Shivti, Shivti, Koyeme Hayai, Shivti, Shivti. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the break of dawn. Jacob, in this moment, is faced with an impending major situation. He's about to see Esav, his brother, for the first time in many years, and is terrified of this reunion. Just as when he left his home many years ago, Jacob is now alone at night. When we read last week about Jacob fleeing Esav and his parents when he was alone at night, he had a dream in which angels came up and down a ladder, ensuring him safety, security, and protection. This time, Jacob's lonely encounter with a being is different. This is his first time perhaps being alone since that fateful time so many years ago. As he is confronted with this mysterious ish, this mysterious being, we wonder who that is. The commentators over the course of history have given different explanations. Perhaps this ish, this being, is an angel. Maybe it's Esav's protector. Perhaps a river demon. It's unclear who this being is that Jacob is faced with. Another idea one offered this week by my classmate, Kevin Peters, in a drasha that he gave, is what if this ish, this mysterious figure, is the same figure that we are all confronted with when we are alone, when we are levad? What if this ish is really just Jacob's own self, his fears, his worries, his anxieties, his concerns? What if this wrestling match 
is truly all about Jacob. How would we respond to this challenge? What does it mean to wrestle with our own selves, especially when we're left alone in the middle of the night, afraid? What does it mean to feel these things when we can't fall asleep at night, when we live day after day with the emptiness and the loneliness of not being able to be in community with each other? I think that we can learn lessons from Yaakov here that start with the word that is used for this wrestling, vayyavik. This Hebrew word does absolutely mean to wrestle or to grapple, but it can also mean to intertwine. And according to some commentators, it can even mean to hug or to embrace. What can we learn then from Jacob's wrestling, from his hugging, from his intertwining, and from his embracing himself? We can learn that we have the power to inflict damage onto ourselves, but we also have the power to offer ourselves boundless blessings. Jacob does not escape from his intertwining unscathed. This ish, it says in the Hebrew yagabo, this wrestler has the ability to touch Jacob, to harm him, to wrench his hip out of place. We can at times be formidable adversaries to our own selves. Our fears and anxieties can touch us deeply in ways that no one else can. They can slow us down. They can hurt us. Jacob has a limp as a result of this encounter that stays with him for the rest of his life. And the trauma from this wrestling stays with his descendants, with us, to this day through the laws of kashrut when we cannot eat the sciatic nerve, this hip area of animals. But Jacob is also blessed by this meeting. At the end of the encounter, Jacob has wrestled and intertwined himself with his fears such that he emerges on top pinning down this wrestler and demanding blessing. He is gifted a new name, Israel, a name denoting strength and connection to the divine. He goes forward with a newfound security and confidence that he is now able to take on his, inter his inner demons and to emerge stronger than he was before. We all know, especially with the lessons we have learned over the past nine months, that these wrestling matches are not one-time occurrences. The Torah may only record this one tussle, but Jacob, Israel, and every one of us experience this intertwining and these wrestling at multiple points in our lives. Our fears, our anxieties, our inner demons never completely leave us. Jacob's limp remains as he still shows extreme caution in his approach to Esav. But as we intertwine with and embrace ourselves, we can learn what blessings we have to give, what inner strengths we have to find that can help us move forward. We each have our own angels, our own messengers, our own selves to wrestle with and to embrace. This Shabbat, I wish that you may find yourself to be a source of blessing, that you may give yourself the strength you need to confront whatever is waiting for you in the week ahead. Shabbat Shalom.